Week nine. Take one. Welcome to the Luxley Show. Hi, I'm Leah. I'm Huxley, and on this week's show... This is a little stone. Uh, who has a life all of its own. And now for this. And now for this. What do you call a train man who steps on a live rail? A conductor. This morning, we did it in the sunshine, we did a bit of planting. We did. We planted some daffodils and a raspberry bush and repotted our little cactus. I'm going to get some strawberries and some tomatoes. Hopefully they will be reasonably fruit bearing for the end of the mm. summer season. And we hurried to do it today because apparently there's going to be a heat wave next week so who knows in March but it might happen so it was sunny today see green thumbs there you go so yeah get out do your planting enjoy that sunshine you can't really tell this but we're in a slightly different seating area because we've moved our front room around it's quite cool isn't it yeah it's quite nice it uh, is nice and I've also picked up uh, Mr B the gentleman oh. rhymer tickets uh, and uh, uh, supported by Jay Foreman, uh, who's a fantastic uh, acoustic comedian uh, guitarist. And so uh, Mr B, the gentleman of mine, will be chat popping it up on uh, this particular evening. This is uh, Friday the 21st of March. So if you haven't got your tickets, go out and get them now. And if you want to check out who I'm talking about, have a look in the links in the description below. And if you go in, tell us. So do you think you figured out last week's riddle? How many months have 28 days? The answer is all of them. <laughs> Last week you saw magic rules one through to four. Uh, so this week you've got rule rules five through nine and my top tips. Check them out. So these are the four rules. If you follow these rule rules with every trick that you do, you'll be a great magician. However, there are these extra rules. Now these extra rules are quite interesting. Number five, a big move covers small move. Now, this comes into play in lots of different tricks that I do, especially the sponge routine or uh, the magic stick trick. So uh, check out those episodes and those lessons, if you will, for how a big move would cover a small move, okay? It's a good principle in magic and I'll explain it as we talk about those tricks. Number six, never repeat a trick. Compulsion is, especially for young children, to Show off the trick, it works very well. The adult is impressed, so they want to show that trick again. Don't do it, okay? Never repeat a trick unless you have a different method for the same effect. Method is how you did something, and the effect is what happened. So if you can find a different method for the same outcome, then it's not the same trick in the eyes of the spectator. This also works the other way around. If you can find a different uh, effect for, for the same method, um, you can usually utilise that and it's pa packaged and parceled in a different way for uh, your spectators who are watching. So uh, try not to repeat a trick. Usually I say two months, one or two months. Don't show that same person the same trick for at least a month or thereabouts. So give the, that time in your mind for that person to forget it. Um, the example I used uh, was a joke. So if you, if you say, uh, why does this chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. And you might have a few giggles. And then if you wait a little bit longer and then say, why did the chicken cross the road? And to get to the other side isn't very funny anymore because you've just heard it. If I told you it in a week, you still might remember. But if I told you in a month, the chances are you probably wouldn't remember that that is the punchline. Um, so again, with magic, similar. So try and uh, leave a long distance between repeating that same trick with the same group of people. It gives you an opportunity as a magician to go out and learn some more magic to show them some new tricks. By all means, if you've shown them one trick and it works, show them a different trick and a different trick. As many different tricks as you like, but never the same trick twice, okay? Never go into your pocket without a good reason. Now there's loads of good reasons to go into your pocket and people don't seem to, to realise what they are. So this comes to play very much so in the sponge routine or if you just want to magically make something appear then you need to make sure that you've loaded that into your hand beforehand and you can do that under the guise of going into your pocket. So for instance at the moment I could put my pen back into my pocket 
and whilst I was in there I could secretly grab something else and uh, you'd see I'd be pointing at this and then I have a remote Ooh! and I could put the remote back in my pocket and uh, yeah and so I get myself a pen but secretly so never go into your pocket without a reason number eight uh, your audience needs a, a moment of magic with each trick and routine that you do if you add your special touch or your signature if you add your magic wand and tap it three times if you add your magic word and get them to repeat the magic word then you'll add a bit of yourself into your magic uh, and that can be your signature move and people will remember that signature move um, I've recently been using Huxley magic and getting the kids to say Huxley magic and it's brilliant because I can say huxleymagic.co.uk or Huxley magic on Facebook uh, and uh, the adults will get the gesture and the joke and the kids will even remember when they go home I need to check out, uh, what was it, uh, Huxley Magic, that's the one, and that's me. So, number nine and the last one, have fun. If you have fun, your audience will have fun as well. So enjoy it. There's no point doing a depressing trick because your audience will see it as depressing. So try and do it with a bit of enthusiasm and have a laugh because if you have a laugh and then you will have a laugh if your people have a laugh and then they'll have a laugh because you're having a laugh so on and so forth. Did you hear about the man who got a new job with the railway? He had to keep track of everything. And these are the nine major rules to magic. I've also written down a couple of top tips. Try and always be one or two moves ahead, very much like chess, trying uh, grandmasters always three or four moves ahead, but if you can be one or two more moves ahead of your spectators, if you can plan the routine, maybe from backwards, start at the end and work to back to the beginning, and always be one move ahead. Um, for tips on this, try and uh, check out my uh, sponge routine, and that shows you about pocket management and always being one or two moves ahead. Second one is quality over quantity. It's far greater to have three amazing tricks than it is to have 30 okay tricks. Okay, practice those three solid ones. Okay, practice them until they just roll out of you and they are fantastic and get good reactions every time. They don't know what happens next. So if something goes wrong in a routine, they don't know whether that's part of the routine. So think about that, okay? Uh, make it part of your routine. If you um, pull the wrong card out of and it's not lost, make a joke of it. Try and work out where you are in the trick and then pull it back. They don't know if that's part of the trick or not. So think about that. Don't say, oh, it's gone wrong. They don't know that. You usually get quite a few down on the pier there. Uh, last one, roll with your mistakes. Um, I'll give you an example for this one. I once uh, did a silly rope trick where you show a rope and you've got a rope and you can tie a knot one-handed. And the idea is you, you flick it like this. Now, you, 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 that's the trick, okay? And it's quite a simple trick because you just have a knot concealed in your hand before you start. Okay, it's in there, like that, hands down here, long bit of rope down here, fancy fingers open like that, and I'm just trying to grab that end. Now I'm going to purposefully miss a couple of times. Now when I'm doing this on stage, sometimes I flick it like this. I flick it like this, and once I flicked it like this, and it created a knot. So I'd accomplished my challenge without realising it, accidentally, and that was the result. But I knew in my head I still had one of these in here. So all I needed to do was flick it up like that, and a big move covers the small move, and you can see I've now got two knots. So it's double impressive, and it's something that's never going to happen. It's not anything that I could repeat again. So really roll with your mistakes, because sometimes you can end up with uh, something that's far greater than the original trick that you ended up with. You'll never be able to repeat that trick, but then that person was there to experience it when it happened and you look like pretty amazing. Um, another one is a card. Uh, sometimes, uh, if I'm getting a deck of cards out, I'll say, name a card, and someone will, will name a card, and sometimes uh, they'll say, four hearts. <laughs> And often, and I genuinely didn't know that that was the Four of Hearts, uh, yeah, sometimes, randomly, you can pick up a card and get them to name it, and you take the top card and it'll be there. Or you could even go, uh, Seven of Clubs, uh, or oh, Close, King of Clubs, and make a joke of it, and then go back into the new trick. 
So, uh, yeah, Frankie, that was wicked. That was a perfect example of rolling <laughs> with your mistakes, because you really do never know. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, my silly bits of magic and advice for you. If you've got any top tips or if you've got any uh, advice for any young magician or anyone who's aspiring to be a good magician, please put them in the comments below and let me know what you think of my rules to magic. Thanks so much. See you next week. So, the next competitor uh, after... Who did last week's? Kev. Kev did last week's uh, on the claw and he did okay, but uh, let's find out how Radish gets on this week. I'm not ready. <laughs> New challenger! <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Oh, oh he put the light on! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Light's going on me. You get in the air completely in the hole. We should have oh. explained this, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> How do you open the thing? With a S. claw at the left. Right. S. The other one's oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, shit, uh, uh, no, uh, J. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's right. good. Oh, it's oh. very good. Oh, he's got a fast time. Oh, it's, it's not going to be good, I don't think, because it's not in the right place. Oh, it's a grip it. Oh, grip it. Okay. And how do I put it up? <laughs> good question. Oh, yeah. Okay. You've been asking right. that for cool. a while, eh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay then. Right, cool. Oh. 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 oh! It's not oh. all! Right. Oh, I need to. Uh, is it, is it gonna. Oh, is he. Uh, no, it's not. Well, oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe. No. Oh, it's just oh. not quite there! Uh, uh, back one. Oh! oh. So with a score of 1 minute 13, 76, that puts Radish all in second position. So you've got Chris on the top, uh, followed by Lu uh, Radish, then Lucy, Kev and me trailing in last position. Find out how well Miles does next week.